I want to bring in Ricky Kleeman again. Ricky, I see you ferociously going through the uh, George Papadopoulos uh, paperwork there. We know that he pled guilty uh, at the beginning of this month, but we don't know yet what he pled guilty to. What are you reading? Well, this is a 14-page indictment. Nice. I have not yet finished reading it, but I do think that what's significant is this. He pled guilty to lying to the federal government, meaning the FBI, when they were yeah, interviewing him about the issue of possible collusion of the Trump campaign uh, with Russia. And I'm just going to read out loud one little paragraph right. because it will continue on from there. Um, Keeping in mind the thrust of this is that Mr. Papadopoulos met a man who was called the professor uh, when he was in London. The professor then introduces him to a female Russian operative, whatever that may mean, or a female Russian. Um, let me correct myself. Mm -hmm. But and when we get through the indictment, it is that the defendant, Mr. Papadopoulos, worked with the professor and the female Russian national, not operative, national, corrected, to arrange a meeting between the campaign and the Russian government and took steps to advise the campaign of his progress. The professor allegedly said that he, through the female Russian uh, national, uh, would have dirt on Hillary Clinton. Oh, wow. This indictment, when we get through it as the time goes on, this indictment is profound. The fact that it's a plea of guilty to a false statement, which in his situation he has cooperated, there is a plea agreement attached to this indictment. The fact of his cooperating by pleading guilty alone is an acceptance of responsibility, meaning I didn't tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. um, it, that may mean that this young man may be really frightened and is going to tell them everything, already has told them everything that he knows. Mm -hmm. But the reality of this situation is this is directly an issue about uh, the Trump campaign mm -hmm. coming from this young man. So he lied about... To the Bureau, to the FBI. ...arranging these meetings and... Or, and, or and, any and of his conversations. Something along those lines, okay. So let me play for our viewers a very interesting moment that happened back in July of 2016 between CBS This Morning co-host Nora O'Donnell and uh, Paul Manafort. And I think it's sort of telling because on one hand, it suggests what the president of the United States has been saying all along, which is that he it did not collude with, uh, with the Russians. But let's play it and then let's talk about it on the other side. Paul, I saw that Trump tweeted yesterday that he has zero investments in Russia. But does Russia have investments in Trump? Would Mr. Trump be willing to release his taxes to provide transparency on this issue? Mr. Trump has said that his taxes are under audit and he will not be releasing them. It has nothing to do with Russia. It has nothing to do with any country other than the United States and, and his, his normal tax auditing processes. So uh, th that issue will be dealt with when the audits are done. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. All right, Ricky, as a counselor, just taking the reaction from Mr. Manafort to the questioning by Nora, I have a couple of questions about that video clip. And specifically, we can already say that Nora was asking specifically about Donald Trump, yes, not about was. Paul Manafort. But what do you take from his reaction? Well, we could take many things from his reaction. We could take the fact that he has no idea what is in Mr. Trump's tax returns and that he has no idea uh, if Mr. Trump had any foreign investments in Russia. Or we could take the fact that he's stumbling in his answer and that he is trying to find a way to weave his way through an answer. I don't know. Here's a question, because when I look at that clip and I see the fact that many people have suggested that there is no collusion and, and the president himself has said that, he's tweeting about it right now. And yet, when there were questions posed to several Trump administration officials with regards to contacts, any kind of contacts with foreign operatives, Many of them said no, and then it turns out, oh, yes, there were, including the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, uh, and they, that, that's just the first of many. So the question, I guess, is do we, can we, we, although the president is saying that there is no collusion and nothing has been proven, nothing in this indictment is there, that doesn't mean that there isn't any collusion. Of course not. Um, it goes back to what I was saying uh, to Anne-Marie earlier, that um, 
Mr. Mueller, Robert Mueller has an investigation that is not did not end today. Uh, right. That's on October a very good point. Right. Um, Robert Mueller and his fellow prosecutors are going to continue to investigate, and that they're not only going to continue to investigate Mr. Manafort and Mr. Gates in terms of where does that spiral to, but they're also, and perhaps far more important. Um, going to continue to investigate all of the contacts, if any, of uh, people in the Trump campaign in terms of possible collusion with the Russians that may have affected the election, whether or not it affected the election result, of course, is always a subject of debate. Mm -hmm. But that the reality here is that we do not, this is not over. I mean, Yogi Berra is, it's not over till it's over. Yeah. Um, and I think that Robert Mueller is going to continue to plot along in his very methodical way and get everything that he can get. You know, and I think even beyond that, Ricky, when you talked about the indictment of George Papadopoulos there, or um, that, you know, he talked about meeting with a female Russian who may have dirt on Hillary Clinton. Of course, it reminds us of the meeting with uh, Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner. Sure. A, a similar scenario. I would love to see, you know, the name of that woman and find out what sort of connections there are. And it makes you wonder, beyond this indictment, just how many other times something like that happened during the campaign, where whether or not this was sort of an M.O., uh, for a group, you know? We, we just have no idea. And um, when I report back to you next, hopefully by that time I will really have dissected this indictment. Yeah. But reading it, even skimming it, the language of it is, uh, is highly explosive. And um, I will bet that as the news cycle goes throughout the day, that the Papadopoulos indictment is going to become the one that goes to the front. And it's a so question, you know, it's... Oh, it, it, I should say it's, it's an information, by the way. He pleaded guilty to an information, uh, and not an indictment in that traditional sense. What that means is the same thing as a charging document, but that he was obviously by that time agreeing to cooperate, meaning that he would at least enter a plea of guilty mm -hmm. so that uh, this would go quietly and smoothly, which it obviously did. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's just interesting. It's a question that we had earlier for Ryan Grimm at The Intercept, which is just the idea that people close to the president of the United States, even if the president himself is not directly involved, would be involved in something like this. And I know this is going reaching way back into American history. This is very similar, I think, to the Teapot Dome scandal of the 1920s, which did not affect President Harding. It was not directly President Harding who was ultimately found uh, guilty or at fault at that, but the people surrounding him, and it did ruin his administration. And it's just interesting that, that we're talking about this now, and the, the narrative is going to be, well, this happened many years ago, or it didn't have anything to do with the president of the United States. He's not directly implicated. But just the idea that somebody close to the president. What's the old phrase? Um, it's actually said to me by uh, my Russian uh, hair, my hairdresser, who says to me um, that they say, uh, show me your friends. It tells me who you are. Mm, very good point. Indeed. Ricky Kleeman, as always, so good to have you here to help us break this down because we are clearly not lawyers. No. And if we ever ask any questions that appear to not make sense, it's because we are not Ricky lawyers. Read, <laughs> you help us very much. Ricky skimmed almost all of that indictment in the time that it would have taken me to read one paragraph. So <laughs> well, I was so grateful to, to have her I'm here. I'm reading comprehension yes. of a legal indictment. Thank you, Ricky, as <laughs> Thank always. You.